What's up? My name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be showing you how you can set up your own Valheim private server to get you and your friends all playing together. It's very similar to a Minecraft server in that we'll be downloading a dedicated server and we'll be running it off of a local computer. Then we'll have to allow it through our firewall and port forward for other people to connect outside of our local internet. Note that unlike paid platforms, you'll have to be running the server on your own hardware, meaning you'll have to keep your computer on and running as long as you'd like the server to be up and running. So with all of that aside, let's go ahead and start. First of all, open up Steam on an account that you own Valheim on. Why is that? Well, you'll see Valheim down here, but if we click the button at the top and click Tools to enable this, we'll be able to search for Valheim once again, and this time we'll see Valheim Dedicated Server. When you see this, simply click Install, choose the location to install it to, and then click Next. Now, all we have to do is wait for the server to download and install on our computer. This will usually take a couple of minutes. A quick side note, you don't need Steam installed to download the Valheim dedicated server. You can use Steam CMD. Basically, it's a command prompt version of Steam that you can download and install servers from. Usually you'd use this to install dedicated servers, but you can do it directly through Steam. Navigating across to this link in the description down below, you can click download to download the zip, open it up, extract it to a folder like a place on your desktop, drag the exe out of the zip into said folder, close the zip, simply open it up, and a black command prompt window will open. After it downloads and updates Steam, simply type in login space anonymous, then simply type in app underscore update 896660, which is the ID for the server. After hitting enter, the server will be downloaded, and if an update is available, it'll update it. So to update your server, just simply run this app update command once again. Because I already downloaded it, I'll cancel this out in just a second, but you'll find it inside of Steam Apps, common Valheim dedicated server. Note that this is on my desktop, the same place that we have Steam CMD right here. Seems like it even fully installed, so <laughs> there's all the files. When it's done, simply head back to your games library, locate the server again, right click it, hover over manage and click browse local files. After doing this, the server files will open up. You can see up here, start headless server dot bat. This is what we'll be running to start our server. But before we do that, we'll open up the Valheim dedicated server manual down here and you should give it a read. This will tell you all you need to know about hosting your own server step by step. It's really simple, but we'll be running through it here anyways. We've already gone through, downloaded and installed it, Let's go ahead and start by running it. So before running the server, you'll have to manually enter some relevant information into the start.bat file, and on Linux, it'll be startserver.sh. We recommend that you back up the file before making any changes to it, and be aware that this file will be reset when updating it in Steam. So what do we need to do? Well, simply copy this start headless server.bat and paste it in the same folder. Then rename it something like run me for server or whatever you'll remember it as. In order to run your server in the future, you'll right click this batch file that we just copied to, click create shortcut, and you can place this on your desktop or something like that to open the server whenever you wanna play it. So it will open up the copy that we just created and renamed, and we'll look inside of it. This is the config that we'll be changing. So make a local copy of the script, done. Minimum password length is five characters, and password can't be in the server name. Cool. You need to make sure that the ports 2456 to 2458 are being port forwarded to your server through your local router and firewall. We'll get there in just a moment. But for now, look at the very bottom. Valheim server, no graphics, batch mode, name. This is where you enter the name of your server. So I'll call it, say, troubleshoot server. Port, I'll leave as default. World, I'll change from dedicated to, say, test. And you can enter a password here. I'll use say ASDF1234. Something that you do need to be aware of is that this world name over here can be literally anything. Basically, whatever it is will be the world that's loaded from the server files. And if you'd like to import your own existing world, I'll show you that in another video. Check the description down below for that. But once we've done this, save it and close out of the batch file. From here, we can run server.bat and our server will start up. Note that doing this won't allow other people outside of your local network to connect. We'll only be connecting to our own server locally to see if it works as expected. So now that we've done all of that, let's get to allowing the game through our firewall and then port forwarding. To allow the dedicated server through your firewall, on Windows, press Start and type in Firewall. Open up the Windows Defender Firewall and inside of here, head into Advanced Settings. 
Now, of course, as you can see, some of these are managed by my antivirus or firewall software. If you have a custom antivirus with a firewall built into it or simply firewall software, you'll have to allow the ports through there. But if you don't see this error and you're simply using the Windows Defender firewall, you can start by clicking inbound rules in the top left, then new rule in the top right. We'll go ahead and port forward now. I'll click port, next, TCP, and these specific local ports will be 2456, 2457, and 2458. In order to get them to work, simply add a hyphen 2458. This will port forward 56, 57, and 58. Copy this as we'll need to enter this four times. Simply click next, allow, next, next, and enter a name. I'll enter Valheim, though it doesn't matter what the name is. Then new rule, and the same thing again, port, next, this time UDP, paste in the ports, next, allow, next, next, Valheim, finish. Then head across to outbound rules in the top left and in the top right, click new rule, port, next, TCP, paste, next, allow, next, next, and Valheim, finish. Once again, new rule, port, next, UDP, paste in the ports, next, allow, next, next, Valheim, finish. Right, now we've allowed it through our Windows firewall, let's go ahead and port forward too. Now because port forwarding is so different on every different router, it's completely impossible for me to make a guide that'll show you how to do it on your specific router. In order to figure out how to port forward on your specific router, I'll give you a demonstration here with a sample website. Note that this website that I'm on isn't going to do anything for you if you navigate to it, but it will work as a good example of what you need to do on your local router. Basically, you need to get across to the admin page and enter the port forwarding section. When inside of here, you'll see something about an external port, internal port, protocol, and a local IP. This is our port forwarding section. We'll be port forwarding ports 2456 to 2458. If you see something like this, or you can enter a range with hyphens, do that. Otherwise, if you can only enter one port at a time, port forward 2456, 7, and then 8. Again, 2456 to 2458. Protocol should be both TCP and UDP. If you don't have a combined option like this, do it once for TCP and then again for UDP for all of the ports. Then finally, local IP. This is your IP address of your computer inside of your local network. To find this out, hold start, press R, then type in CMD. Hit enter, and inside of here, type in IP config, then hit enter once again. Look for the way that you're connected to the internet, then locate the IPv4 address or IPv6 address if you don't see it. Then you'll see it right here. 192.168.1.20 is mine, though of course yours may be slightly different. You'll know you're on the correct one when the default gateway is the same as the place that you logged into your router. Usually it's correct this way. Anyway, 192.168.1.20 is my local IP. So local IP, I'll enter 20 and then click add and then save. Now we've successfully port forwarded these ports from outside our local router through our router directly to our computer. If you have multiple routers in a chain between you and the internet, you need to port forward at each section. Port forwarding allows the outside of that device to come through to a specific device on the inside of that network. So you'll have to port forward on your closest router to your PC, then from the next router in the chain to the router down, closer to your PC, and so on and so forth until you get to your device and the place that you're hosting the server. Awesome, if someone was to join me on my local network, they'd enter 192.168.1.20. To join my own server on my own computer, I'd join localhost or 127.0.01, which are both pointing to my same computer internally. Don't worry about those last two numbers, that's just what it is. For people to connect to my server outside of my local internet connection, you'll have to head across to Google, type in what is my IP, and upon hitting enter, you'll see a bunch of websites and results. Basically, you're looking for either your IPv4 or IPv6 address, and you'll be giving that to your friends to connect to your server. Now that we've port forwarded and allowed it through our firewall, let's go ahead and start up our server by running the runme file that we created earlier. Upon doing this, we'll just have to wait for the server to complete. This can take some time. For now, I'll push it across to the side and we'll open up Steam so that we can add our own server to the server list. In the very top left, click View and then click Servers from the dropdown. Inside of here, head across to the Favorites tab, click Add a Server, and then inside of this box, type in either localhost or 127.0.0.1. Then we'll enter a colon after one of those and type in 2456, the default port for our server. 
From here, you can click find games at this address to test it out and see if it's working. But if you're seeing an issue like this where you're getting nothing back, simply add one to this, 2457, and try again. Now you should see your own servo. Simply click add selected game to favorites and you should see it appear on the favorites list once it's done. Otherwise, click refresh and you'll see it here, troubleshoot servo. Upon double clicking on it, we'll see this. I'll enter the password, hit enter, and we'll connect to it. Eventually, you'll be able to click start and we'll be prompted for the password again. Entering it and hitting enter, we're now connecting to our own server and we'll be able to play on it. Awesome. So of course, as I mentioned earlier, depending on where you are, you'll have to change out localhost or 127001 for the IP address for them to connect to you. If they're on the same local network as you, it'll usually be 192.168 something something something, the same one we port forwarded on our local router too. That's only really if they're sitting directly next to you. If you'd like them to connect through the internet, you'll have to give them your external IP address and make sure that port forwarding is set up properly. If you're having issues connecting, make sure that your firewall allows the port through, make sure that you've port forwarded properly, and if you're still having issues, you should try calling your ISP as some ISPs just don't allow you to port forward until you get it enabled with them. It's a bit annoying, but that's just something you might have to deal with. But anyways, that's about it for this video. If you'd like to know how to set yourself as admin or do a couple of other things in this game, check the description down below for links to videos on that. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.